Hello YouTube, hello uh, Twitch, uh, Scott the Nav. Uh, back today uh, for the uh, return flight uh, to uh, Dubai from Muscat on the Swiss uh, 243, I assume. Uh, back to, uh, after that, back to uh, Zurich. Here's the crew coming in. So that's a new uh, feature of uh, GSX, of course, but uh, uh, yeah, it still kind of remains quite funky, I have to say. Um, it's a little bit uh, yeah, funny looking, but eh, it's not too bad, I guess. So yeah, you can see the now they've um, introduced, you know, the you can actually see the passengers coming through the the bridge and into the aircraft. Um, as I said, I had like a view from uh, the kind of first class area, uh, looking at the uh, L1 door with the passengers coming in. But uh, today, uh, on this occasion, um, it's uh, showing from the uh, uh, well, the passengers are boarding on the uh, L2 door, so uh, I had to just to uh, to move the uh, the view towards uh, the L2 door. So yeah, I thought I would just uh, show you guys a little bit, if you've not seen it before, uh, what it looks like. It's a little bit funky, as I said, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it just adds up a little bit. Not gonna spend too much time looking at this, but yeah, there's only uh, four flight attendants, whereas normally it should be at least 14 or even more. So above all, on a 300 year, so yeah, at least uh, one. Uh, one cabin crew per, per door, so uh, given that we have uh, 10 doors on a 300 yard, then there should be at least 10, and then more like for uh, service, you know, purposes. But uh, at least uh, from uh, from what I understand, the uh, the the minimum uh, number of passenger of uh, cabin crew sorry, should be at least one per door. So there we go. So the ident page is correct. It's the correct now. Uh, uh, navigation database uh, so that's all good uh, then the uh, reference airport today uh, back to uh, Dubai from Muscat so I'll we'll put Muscat and then take the GPS position and sell it into the uh, inertial position there then for the route once again simulate the data link request so we'll request the route uh, this there and that obviously as I explained uh, last time doesn't really uh, feature and the uh, rear aircraft you don't have like a list of uh, routes uh, but for the simulation of course here you have to uh, to go through your list uh, it's this one UUMS UMTB01 request so once you press uh, initially like the the request prompt then they come straight to this page there where it shows uh, requesting and then request sent so the the airplane comes up a little bit more quickly here in the simulation than in the real aircraft, but even in the real aircraft it doesn't take that long. So we'll uh, load the uplink. And then we should have uh, all the details there as well. So the uh, origin airport, destination airport, uh, with the data link, the flight number with the uh, uplink as well. So today is the Swiss 243. Uh, but the company route they wouldn't really uh, show on the uh, on the real aircraft there of course uh, and then the routing looking at the flight plan uh, Muscat I was going to say Manchester but it's not Manchester it's Muscat then go 508 to Salud and Papa 574 to Impet so that's correct I'll activate and execute then we'll go to the Perfinite page uh, I'll actually reject that because it's uh, kind of giving us the default information. Uh, so looking at the flight plan here, uh, the reserve is 5.7. And the uplink would actually uh, give us the reserve, it would give us the cruise altitude, which is flyable 200 today, and it would give us also the cost index, which is... Uh, kind of uh, worked on by dispatch according to uh, several factors like uh, 
uh, you know the the cost of the flight uh, versus the cost of fuel and all these uh, good things so uh, for me here it doesn't really matter so much I'll just put uh, uh, 120 there and then I'll preset also the um, at the stage the acceleration height so uh, we'll set 3000 and uh, 1500 is uh, is good there. Then we'll go to the departure arrival. I uh, believe uh, at the moment it's uh, going for 08 left. So it goes 08 left and then go for. I think it's. Uh, which one is it actually? I think it's this one is some sort of radar vectors if I remember. What does it look like? So you can see what it does on the navigation display by going on to the plan mode. And if I make the view bigger. Yeah, straight ahead and then damn that's correct. And looking at the chart it's uh, three thousand feet initially I believe. So we said 3,000 feet. Um, and what I'll do is uh, kind of uh, join, uh, mix them there so that it kind of gives us a correct uh, routing there in the FMC, which is good. Okay, okay. Uh, then we'll check that. Uh, actually not check but load the winds and the uh, root data page and we should have uh, a sample of winds there at uh, the cruising levels uh, well at least at the levels near the, the plant cruise uh, level so we've got 220, 200, 180 and 160 so these are good looking sensible so we can execute that and we've got also the decent uh, forecast page uh, w the decent forecast winds which are uh, ready to be uploaded so we'll go into the forecast page and uh, load the winds as well uh, in this instance it doesn't uh, really give you uh, uh, the winds according to the cruise level and then uh, further down uh, for the descent always kind of gives you those uh, default uh, values there so 350, 310, 200, 10,000 uh, you just uh, have to uh, to take it as is. Sort it out. Uh, 214 is the correct distance. Uh, root copy. We'll do on to root 2 and then back to root 1. All the uh, uplinks have loaded and then uh, we can set some sort of uh, MSA there. 25 miles of uh, the VOR. And we are good to go. So the FO should come back quite uh, quickly. In the meantime, I'll do my uh, panel scan. So the FS panel is uh, set. Flight director can come on. Uh, runway heading is going to be uh, 0. It's runway 08, so it shouldn't be too far off from 080, zero zero, something like that. I'll just quickly double check. Yeah, so the departure is definitely a MoMA 1 November. Uh, that's correct. I'm back from the walk around. Everything looks good. Excellent. And the 084 is the heading. Okay. So we said 084 there. And uh, 3000 feet as well as the initial altitude. I'll probably uh, climb straight away because I'm not online or anything like that. So uh, no, uh, no ATC. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, you're right, uh, Matty, uh, 738, I guess uh, uh, they're going to get the aircraft to fly again. Uh, they can't really uh, 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 drop the uh, the project altogether, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, it will be like a total uh, failure. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just like dragging on a little bit and... Um, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really inspire much confidence. You know, it's, uh, I've got the feeling that uh, Boeing is kind of a little bit uh, 
going down you know in their standards they, they built like very uh, robust and very reliable aircraft for the last uh, I don't know how many years you know the the 737 NG classic were like very reliable 747 7675 uh, the 777 classic as we would call it now uh, with the uh, X coming up uh, 200 uh, ER, LR, 300, 300 ER, all these have been very reliable and then the 787 started with um, a few uh, issues with the uh, lithium batteries there were like a few fires uh, to start with that was quickly sorted out that didn't last for too long uh, and then the the max you know the the max obviously with these two uh, major incidents um, it's not doing very well and the triple seven x as well the um <coughs> uh, the load uh, test uh, back in september i think it was uh, didn't go very well uh, as well you know um uh, so uh, yeah so it seems like um, something is a little bit wrong with uh, Boeing at the moment so I'm not really sure what uh, what they're up to to tell the truth uh, that's a little bit unfortunate all right so I'll check the oxygen on this is set up uh, the PFD looks good I'll use the B function of the simulation to set the QNH which is 1018 uh, I'll reduce this one. The uh, navigation display is good, and then we'll come down to the to this section here. Uh, the speed break is down. The uh, pitch trim is good. The stop uh, switches are guarded. The thrust levers are closed. The reversers are stored. Flaps up. Okay, boarding completed. That's good. Uh, close L2 door. Okay. So I'll use the center FMC for that. I'll go to FX actions and close the L2 door. So I'll close this one. I'll close the L1 as well. Um, and probably close the cargo doors as well. The first officer is going to work in the background. Uh, minus 24 is going to say boarding, but. <laughs> we already bought it with uh, GSX. So let me bring uh, FS2 crew back. Hi guys, can we start boarding now? Yes. Thanks. And then at minus 19. Yeah, she's gonna do the pre-flight flow, so I'll have to do that in the background. And uh, FS2 crew is uh, hard muted, so that's good. So like always, uh, FS2 crew does the uh, override panel uh, setup. I'll start the APU as well in the meantime. Um, which uh, basically, uh, as I pointed out last time, uh, I believe it's just uh, depending on uh, how the uh, the panel was uh, was left. But uh, uh, mostly uh, at the end of the flight, we just uh, switch off the hydraulics, the fuel pumps. Uh, but the rest kind of uh, remains in uh, default position so that's just to make sure that uh, uh, this uh, situation for example that the packs come back to uh, the auto position but otherwise the rest we don't really touch until we have uh, pressurized the hydraulics and configure the, the panel uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for the start so um, yeah we'll uh, brief uh, FS the crew so we'll uh, use the transponder we're obviously going from the gate uh, the thrust is going to be uh, reduced, of course. Take off config, I'll quickly check it, but it's going to be 5 probably. Uh, packs will be on. Uh, Anti ice is not required. Uh, NADP, that will be 1. We'll uh, reduce the thrust at 1500, accelerate at 3000. We're going to follow the SID and uh, weather and terrain. Um, so like always, I'll uh, spare you the torture of the brief there. I'm not going to play the tape. And I close, uh, close that. Okay, cool. So for the performance, uh, zero fuel rate, we'll just take whatever was in there. That was part of the flight plan. If you press the uh, the corresponding key for the zero fuel rate, it'll come up with uh, whatever is in the system. I preset it, so it's all in there. So 219.5. 
11.7 tons of fuel that gives us a gross weight of 231.2 which is uh, what uh, calculated minus the uh, taxi fuel uh, the assumed temperature uh, lightweight like this is 76 once again and uh, then the engine acceleration depending on the airline but for me it's a uh, thousand feet so we'll set the uh, accelerate at 3000 feet and reduce the thrust at 1500 uh, flaps is 5 CG from uh, PMDG is 21% so it's a uh, forward CG so the trim goes towards the back so it's a bigger number and then for the speeds uh, PMDG gives us uh, 152, 155, 159. Uh, I have slightly different figures, but I've got like an intersection figure from Yankee 3, which I'm not sure is in the uh, scenery or not, but I took it uh, just in case it was in the scenery. So my speeds are 153. Uh, Quite similar, actually. Uh, 155 is correct, actually, so I'll take this one. And V2, 158. So. As you can see, although the figures are not based exactly on the same uh, runway uh, distance, uh, they are relatively similar once you get the correct flaps and the correct assumed temperature. The PMDG gives you like uh, quite reasonable speeds to tell the truth, so that's, uh, that's quite good. So the V2 is 158. And now we now will arm the track is correct and 3000 feet initially. Before start procedure. Are we clear to pressurize? Yes. Okay. I'm still trying to uh, to get to grips. As I said, I've got a piece of paper with the sequence. It's a little bit different to uh, what I'm doing in real, and and obviously it's a bit of a sterile environment here because I'm just sitting in front of the screen, so it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit weird. Right, so the trim was seven units. So I am ready for the checklist. Yeah, yeah, stand by hand. So seven units. Uh, before start checklist. Before start checklist. Flight deck door. Closed and locked. MCP. V2 158, track 084, altitude 3000. Takeoff speeds. Set and checked. CDU preflight. Completed. Completed. Trim. Set and checked. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Before start checklist complete. Cool. The uh, the checklist works. That's good. All right. So let's prepare for the push. Uh, the nose to the left, I believe, from this position. Uh, no. Okay. So the jet the the jetway is removed automatically now. That's good. I'm not gonna start the push with uh, the, the bridge still attached to the aircraft that's, that's a good move go on my various views amazing right so we'll get back to the uh, fight deck uh, cancel the ICAS here. So yeah, so far so good. Marcher check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Release parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. Okay, so on the uh, F o'clock there, I start uh, the time when uh, I release the parking brakes just to kind of uh, count 
officially the the block time so from the time we uh, released the parking brake for the push until we uh, set the parking brake at the gate on the uh, other side so. uh, right. start sequence says uh, one then two check start left engine starting left So the start uh, Oil pressure. button comes on there, that's the job of the first officer, and then the captain uh, switches the fuel control to our run there. So the N2 comes in, the uh, oil pressure rises, the N1 as well, and about now about 33% N2, then the fuel is going to kick in, and the start uh, continues. See the engine turning. It actually uh, makes uh, an amazing sound. Actually, it's a really uh, nice engine. And the push looks like it's doing well. Yeah, it's gonna push us to face uh, hopefully this way, so that we can go out. It's looking good for the push as well. And it's actually gonna set us nicely on the line, it looks like, so that's good. So, start the right engine. Starting right. It's the same thing. And the fuel uh, goes to run there. Now oil pressure. And two, oil pressure, she's already cold, and one is increasing. That's good. And you may have noticed as well that uh, GSX uh, at some point will ask to confirm the good uh, engine starts. That's uh, something new as well. Start. So we confirm. Okay, we have a good engine start. You can uh, disconnect. It's actually not exactly correct because we need to check the recall. But uh, yeah, we'll just uh, go ahead with this. Flaps five. Flaps five. Flaps five. As well. Unlocking gear. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. So the APU should be off. If we need, if we needed uh, anti ice, uh, the engine anti ice would come to the on position. There remains on uh, auto. I check the recall and. Uh, and then when I call for the checklist, I will display the checklist. Normally we do uh, display the checklist as well. And the flaps are set and uh, flight controls are checked. Usually we don't really display the, the flight control there, uh, page, synoptic page. Uh, because uh, what we actually checked is that the controls are free uh, of movement, so you can actually move the controls. Left is clear. Right is clear. So yeah. Then once the uh, engineer is uh, dispatched, then uh, and we can see the pin, then uh, you can check the rudder. You can really uh, check the the rudder uh, movement if uh, uh, the uh, 
the engineer on the ground has not really shown the pin just in case he's left the pin attached and then uh, if you check the rudder when the pin is attached it's not gonna be great it's all right we'll assume it's clear and check the rudder quickly once again you can see it move here you can see the pedals move as well so that's all good excellent Before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist. Anti ice. Auto. Recall. Checked. Flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. Before taxi checklist complete. Clear left. Clear right. So once again, that's the prompt to, uh, for the uh, first officer on there and uh, FS to crew to uh, set the taxi and uh, runway turn off lights, as you can see up here. And so this should be Yankee 3, hopefully. And it's, so I'll uh, turn here and uh, take off from there. Runway entry procedure. Check. Take off. Check. Thrust ref. Check. Thrust set. On taxiway. On taxiway. Eighty knots. Hold. Check. Rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Autopilot. Check. 400 feet. Thrust rev enough speed. Climb to uh, 200. We are on taxi. We on taxi. We on takeoff. That was very interesting. Climb. Okay. Press altitude intervention. And delete the restriction there. And I'll probably give myself uh, a left turn already. We are 2,300. Yeah, that's good. Turn to mix some. Open the speed intervention to keep the speed in the turn. There's no point in accelerating, we are heading in the wrong direction, so I keep the uh, the speed as it was, around 182 at the moment with flaps 5, and then uh, once we are heading in the right direction, then I'll start accelerating. 
just uh, re-execute uh, mix um, so this is uh, perfectly uh, acceptable to do that you kind of uh, keep the the speed as it is with the flaps do the turn and once the turn is complete then you can accelerate there's no point accelerating to 250 knots in the wrong direction so. right so we are almost on the correct uh, heading now it's running out so well I cancel the speed intervention it's bugging 240 knots so that's good it's going to accelerate now. I'll just uh, execute mix sum again. Flaps 1. Speed check, flaps 1. Flaps up. Speed check, flaps up. <clears throat> After a takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. Very good. Cloud. The view over the wing with the cloud around. Quite nice actually. And on the other side. 10,000 feet. Seatbelt sign auto. Seatbelt signs auto. Yeah, so 10,000 feet on the lights are going off, except the, the strobes, obviously, they, they need to stay on. And then uh, very often, depending, of course, on the on the turbulence uh, levels, or, uh, we uh, switch uh, the uh, signal sign to the auto position. Position altitude, altimeters reset standard. Standard set. And the three altimeters on our set to standard uh, transition at 13,000 feet around uh, Muscat. So, uh, we set uh, standard at uh, 13,000 feet or approaching 13,000 feet while clear to a level uh, above, of course. If you only clear to 13,000 feet, then you'll have to keep it as, uh, as the QNH. So it's climbing uh, quite healthily there. Almost 4,000 feet per minute against uh, the other headwind, so it's, uh, it's doing well. Because it's a high rate of uh, climb, then we can use vertical speed uh, to reduce the rate of climb when it's about to reach the cruise level. So 1,000 feet is a good rate uh, to prevent uh, uh, any uh, TCAS uh, warnings, just in case. Here, obviously, is no problem because uh, there's no traffic or anything. But uh, but in real, it's always a good idea to uh, to reduce the rate of climb. Uh, when approaching the, the cruise level just to uh, avoid any uh, potential anti-gas warnings. First, uh, you would get like uh, the, the traffic advisory. So it will tell you like traffic, traffic, you know, and the, uh, the aircraft symbol would, uh, would become amber. And then if uh, the uh, the closure is still happening between the traffic. Thousand feet to level off. Then uh, you would get the, the, resol the resolution advisory, where the uh, the TICA system would give you a uh, guidance on the PFD there with the uh, 
the two uh, red uh, uh, figures there on the PFD and you would have to kind of put the, uh, the aircraft in between to follow the uh, the TCAS guidance so you don't want really you don't really want to uh, to go down that route so it's, uh, it's better to avoid and at the end of the day I like to reduce the, the rate of climb as well as, uh, as good practice uh, and now VSM as well it's kind of uh, uh, highly suggested if not uh, kind of compulsory to kind of uh, try to reduce the rate when you've got like aircraft only separated by a thousand feet so uh, yeah that's a good thing to do so we've got Alt, we're going to uh, Vinav, uh, Vinav Path is going to give us uh, uh, mark this about 703 there for the cruise speed it's doing well top of descent without the arrival is in uh, 81 miles so that's good 